In this video, I'm talking about hearing aid Bluetooth technology and the computer chips that make it happen. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. In 1996, we saw the first generation of digital hearing aids hit the market. And since that time, hearing aid technology has advanced so rapidly that we wouldn't even recognize these devices today. That being said, in 1996, I was still in high school. And now in 2019, we have hearing aids that are a fraction of the size of what they used to be, with computer chips that are more advanced than computer chips used to send humans to outer space. Here is a visual comparison of a DSP chip from 1999 compared to a DSP chip from today. The complexity of these chips from today are mind-boggling. The total size of the chip from 1999 on the left is the same size as the one from today which is on the right. But you can see how many more components and connections are made in the newer chip. It's like comparing the airplane that the Wright brothers flew for the first time to a stealth fighter jet. This new chip technology allows us to do some crazy things with hearing aids, but none of it is quite as cool as the wireless connectivity. Today's technology can wirelessly stream almost any audio directly into your hearing aids. This includes music, audiobooks, podcasts, Netflix movies, YouTube videos, but there are still limitations on this technology. While it is amazing that these computer chips allow us to do these things, the problem with most hearing aids is that they're limited on their wireless protocols. Due to size and technology constraints, most hearing aid manufacturers only utilize two wireless protocols, if they have any at all. But this is where Phonak, today's video sponsor, excels. With their new Sword 3.0 chip inside of their Marvel hearing aids, they were able to incorporate five wireless protocols inside of a chip that is only six square millimeters, which is about half the size of a chip used inside of an Apple iPhone. In fact, here is a visual comparison of the Sword chip to an Apple iPhone 4. I often chuckle to myself when I hear someone say that an iPhone is so much more complex than a hearing aid. Anyone who understands engineering would be blown away by what hearing aid technology can do with the extreme size constraints. Remember, this chip needs to be small enough to fit inside of a hearing aid that sits discreetly behind your ear. Even more shocking is the complexity of this new sword chip. In order to fit 42 million transistors on a chip that's about that big, they had to make the components extremely tiny. Here is a visual comparison that blows me away. This image compares a single connector on the sword chip compared to a single strand of hair. 40 nanometers is so small that it's hard to even imagine how a chip like this could even be developed. Which brings me to my next point. It took Phonak over five years to develop this chip. They had about 50 engineers working on it. it took them over 200,000 total man hours. And if you took one engineer and made him work on it for 12 hours a day, every single day, it would have took him over 45 years. The development of this new sword chip allows us to do five different wireless protocols inside of these hearing aids. And the first wireless protocol is Bluetooth Low Energy. Bluetooth Low Energy is what we use to program the hearing aids and it's also what you use to actually go in and make adjustments to your devices from the remote app. The Phonak remote app allows you to change programs and it allows you to change volume so you don't have to do this on the hearing aids themselves. Second is the Bluetooth Classic protocol. This is what allows the Marvel hearing aids to directly connect with an Android phone as well as an iPhone. And it can be broken down into two sub protocols. You have HFP, which is hands-free protocol. This is what allows you to talk on the phone, both so you can hear them and they can hear you without actually having to talk into your phone. Then you have A2DP, which stands for Advanced Audio Distribution Profile, which gives you the best stereo audio connection for music listening. Third, you have the Airstream protocol, which allows you to connect to the TV connector box that you can attach to your TV set, which will give you Dolby stereo sound. This also allows you to stream audio from your TV at very low latency, so when you hear the words, they actually match up with the mouths of the people talking on your TV. Fourth, you have the BVST protocol, which stands for Binaural Voice Stream Technology. This is what allows your hearing aids to communicate back and forth with each other and gives rise to features like stereo zoom, which helps you hear up to 60% better in a background noise situation. And fifth is the Roger 2.4G wireless protocol, which will be made available in the fall of 2019. The Marvel hearing aids already have this inside of them, but it needs to be activated by a firmware update later on in the year. 
And when this gets made available, this is going to be unbelievable because it's gonna allow you to connect directly with these Roger accessories. Like my favorite accessories, the Phonak Roger Pen and the Phonak Roger Select, which both can dramatically improve how well you hear in a background noise situation by picking up the voices of whoever you want to hear. And it will allow you to stream that audio directly into your hearing devices. You don't need a receiver that you have to wear around your neck or anything like that. All you have to do is turn on those devices and you're gonna be able to stream that audio directly into your hearing aids. I, for one, am extremely happy that Phonak took the time to develop a chip this advanced so their hearing aids can do all of these different wireless protocols. Bluetooth isn't just a nice to have feature inside of a hearing aid. If you have difficulty hearing the TV, hearing on the telephone, hearing in a background noise situation, having these wireless protocols inside of a hearing aid can dramatically improve your performance. At the end of the day, whether you like it or not, Bluetooth technology is here and it is here to stay and it is completely taking over the hearing aid industry and it is improving the way that you can hear in almost any environment. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.